by the great uh, writer James Joyce, the Irish writer. In fact, uh, James Joyce is known for his experimental use of language and exploration of new literary methods, including interior monologue, the psychological novel, use of a complex network of uh, symbolic parallels and uh, invented words. Uh, he of, often plays with words and uh, we have abundance use of puns and uh, allusions in his novels. And uh, we have uh, great novels like uh, the Ulysses and uh, Finnegan's Way by James Joyce. Today we discuss the short story Evelyn uh, prescribed for the fourth semester be an English main students of uh, the University of uh, uh, Calicut. And uh, we have uh, the uh, course Appreciating Fiction. And uh, in fact, we discuss uh, the story Evelyn by uh, James uh, Joyce. This short story has a lot of uh, significance. In fact, we have uh, discussed the uh, short story Cactus the other day. So also we uh, discuss uh, the a short story by uh, Maxim Gorky that is her lover and uh, in all these uh, stories like uh, the cactus then uh, her lover of uh, Maxim Gorky and uh, in Evelyn of James Joyce again we have uh, the very uh, problems of uh, women the like uh, the very mind of women the very emotions and the uh, very uh, 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 thoughts, the desires, and of course, the very working of the mind of the women we have in all these uh, short stories. Like the cactus, of course, uh, we have uh, the lover who fails to understand uh, the uh, desire and uh, the wish and the readiness of uh, uh, the uh, girl. Uh, that is uh, the like the arrogant, uh, affect a pretentious uh, egoistic uh, character fails to recognize the uh, love and care his beloved has for uh, him that is uh, the very uh, theme of the story of the cactus trisdale fails to have uh, the company and uh, the uh, life he, he cannot just live with her because of his arrogance and his it was his arrogance and his uh, pretensions that led, led to his uh, failure and uh, now in the Maxim Gorky story of her lover again we understand uh, the very suppressed uh, uh, desires of uh, a lonely lady everybody wants to be loved everybody wants to have a companion but uh, maybe when you don't have a companion, you just imagine that you have, you have a companion. So the very desire of uh, human mind, the very urge of uh, human beings to uh, be loved and be understood is the very theme of uh, the story Halaur by Maxim Gorgi. And Evelyn, uh, the story of James Joyce, deals with uh, the very... Uh, uh, problems of women. We can say that uh, uh, it is, of course, about some of the feminist issues. Maybe we can say that this story is about uh, uh, feminist issues like marriage. It's about uh, uh, bringing up children. It's about, of course, uh, maybe pregnancy, maybe household works. Maybe it's again about having a husband. It's about having children. It's having. Uh, it's about having maybe a father-in-law, maybe a mother-in-law, and it's about maybe the question of getting married. Should we? Should I get married? That is a question that uh, the story raises. Evelyn and I would say uh, it is good that we go for a very detailed discussion of uh, the story. Now, before uh, discussing the story, we will just have we have a very detailed. Um, uh, biographical biography of uh, James Joyce in the very course book. So we'll just have a quick reading so that we understand the significance of uh, uh, James Joyce, the great uh, writer, the great novelist, 
who experimented with a lot of uh, narrative techniques like uh, interior monologue, the kind of stream of consciousness novels, psychological novels. And of course, we know uh, James Joyce is known for uh, the portrait of the artist as a young man. And uh, in this course book, Appreciating Fiction, the story Evelyn begins with a quotation from the novel, uh, the portrait of the artist as a young man. And when we read the novel, the portrait of the artist as a young man, we understand that this is autobiographical. This is very much autobiographical. And the hero of uh, the portrait of the artist as a young man is Stephen Dedalus. And Stephen Dedalus, the protagonist or the hero of the portrait of the artist as a young man, is nobody but James Joyce. And the very life of people in Dublin, the life of uh, people in and around the city of uh, Dublin, and the very childhood, the very experiences and the very incidents in the childhood days of Stephen de Dallas writer, that is of course James Joyce, is very, very graphically, vividly presented. And uh, uh, as Stephen de Dallas grows up, we understand that uh, uh, he uh, uh, is, of course, in a crisis, right? He doesn't know uh, what to do. Like he is being influenced by his society. He is under the influence of family. He is under the influence of religion. And now that he is being influenced by family, religion, society, he fails to understand his uh, life, rather. He fails to understand the purpose of his life. But by uh, the, as he grows up, as he becomes an adult, as he becomes, right, by the time he becomes an adult, he undergoes a lot of experiences and all those experiences helps him to understand what life is, wh why we are all born, why uh, an individual is born, and again, what should we just look for? All, all that is uh, very, very clearly illustrated in the great novel of James Joyce, The Portrait of Artist as a Young Man. And of course, uh, by the end of this novel, we understand that James, uh, Stephen de Dallas, Stephen de Dallas is of course James Joyce. He decides to leave the city of Dublin and he decides to just uh, become uh, a, an artist, right? So he is born to be an artist and uh, of course, uh, uh, he has to uh, pursue that uh, very life of an artist and he decides to, of course, uh, pursue that line. And uh, that is, uh, of course, uh, uh, about uh, the very, very theme of uh, the uh, novel, the portrait of the artist as a young man. And now uh, when we come to uh, the very biography, okay, let us just go for a detailed discussion of the biography of uh, James Joyce. I will just read whatever uh, we have in the course appreciating fiction. One of the most influential and innovative writers of the 20th century, James Augustine Aloysius Joyce, was born on 2nd February 1882 in Dublin, Ireland to John Stanislaus Joyce and his wife Mary Jane Murray or May. The Joyce family was initially well off but John Joyce's habitual unemployment, along with his drinking and spending habits, made it difficult for the Joyce to retain their social standing. That's about the father of uh, James Joyce. As a result of their steadily diminishing wealth and income, the Joyce family was repeatedly forced to move to more modest residences. Nevertheless, Charismatic John Joyce passions, eccentricities, as well as his gift as a singer are celebrated in his son's works. So this is about the childhood days and uh, the parentage uh, about, of, of James Joyce. And as we read uh, the story Evelyn, we understand that Evelyn's father was to a certain extent uh, uh, like, was like the very father of James Joyce, that is John Stanislaus Joyce. Okay, and now we continue our discussion of the biographical details of James Joyce. Joyce was largely 
educated by Jesuits at Congo's, Clongo's Wood College and Belvedere College before going to University College Dublin, where he studied modern languages and secured a Bachelor of Arts degree in October 1902. From an early age, Joyce showed not only exceeding intelligence, but also a gift for writing and a passion for literature. Joyce became particularly interested in the work of Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen and Irish writer W.B. Ames, William Butler Ames. Maybe most of the students are familiar with the poetry of uh, William Butler Ames, and uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, influence of W.B. Ames on uh, James Joyce. He even managed to learn Norwegian language all by himself to read Henry Ibsen's plays in the language they had been written and spend his free time devouring Dante, Aristotle, and Thomas Aquinas. In 1900, his article entitled Ibsen's New Drama, a review of Henry Ibsen's play, When We Dead Awaken, 1899, appeared in the fortnightly review. So this shows the very interest of uh, young James Joyce in literature. He was influenced by Henry Ibsen, W.B. Ames, and he also read Dante, Aristotle, and Thomas Aquinas. Now let's uh, look at, at uh, the life uh, of uh, young Joyce as a graduate. After graduation, Joyce went to Paris to study medicine, and he was recalled to Dublin in April 1903 three due to illness and subsequent death of his mother. In 1904, Joyce published three of his early short stories, The Sisters, Evening After the Race, in his Irish Homestead magazine. And uh, Evelyn is the prescribed story. In June 1904, Joyce met a charming chambermaid hailing from Galway called Nora Barnacle, with whom he spent the rest of his life. Joyce and Nora Barnacle had a first date on 16th June 1904, the date on which his novel Ulysses is set. They left Dublin together in October 1904. They moved first to what is now the Croatian city of Pula before settling in the Italian seaport city of Trieste. The couple had two children, a son named Giorgio, born in 1905, and a daughter named Lucia, born in 1907. In 1907, Joyce published his first collection of poems, Chamber Music. His poetry was noticed by Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot and included in Pound's influential Images Anthology of 1914. His collection of short stories entitled Dubliners, on which he had been working since 1904, was finally published in the same year. Joy's first novel, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, appeared in serial form in Harriet Shaw Weaver's The Egoist magazine in 1914 and 1915. And the complete text was published in 1916. The novel is profoundly autobiographical and it traces the intellectual and emotional development of a young man named Stephen de Dallas and ends with his decision to leave Dublin for Paris to devote his life to art. So that's the very theme of the novel, the portrait of the artist as a young man. The hero, Stephen de Dallas, decides that he is born to be an artist and he leaves Dublin for Paris. And that is the theme of uh, the theme, uh, I mean, the portrait of the artist as a young man. Now. Uh, more about the life of uh, James Joyce. After the beginning of World War I, Joyce and his family members were forced to leave Trieste in Italy. During the period of the war, they lived in Zurich in Switzerland. After the war, they returned for a few months to Trieste. Then July 1920, they moved to Paris at the invitation of Ezra Pound and Joyce stayed there for next 20 years. Between 1917 and 1930, Joyce endured a series of 25 operations for iritis. 
glaucoma and cataracts and sometimes for short intervals he was even totally blind so uh, james joyce uh, in fact underwent a series of operations and uh, of course uh, he had some uh, problems with his eyes in fact he underwent 25 operations for the iritis glaucoma and cataracts and sometimes he was uh, even even blind and despite of all these problems he continued his literary career despite these difficulties he kept up his spirits and continued working in 1918 he published his play exiles in March 1918, the American literary magazine Little Review bega began to publish episodes from Ulysses and the publication of the episodes continued until the work was banned in America in December 1920, charging obscenity. So uh, the, uh, obs the charge of obscenity and because of uh, obscenity, the uh, publishing or the, uh, yeah, uh, in, in uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, the novel was uh, published in Little Review magazine, and it is of course just banned for uh, being uh, maybe having some obscenity. Okay, uh, in Paris, Joyce met and befriended an American expat, Sylvia Beach, who offered to publish Ulysses in its entirety under the imprint of her bookshop in Paris, Shakespeare and Company. Finally, Ulysses was published in Paris on 2nd February 1922. The action of the novel takes place in Dublin on a single day, 16th June 1904. So uh, some time ago, we saw that uh, James Joyce got uh, uh, engaged to uh, Nora Barnacle, and their first date was on 16th June 1904. So that very day is the very uh, day of uh, the commencement of uh, the uh, novel Ulysses. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the entire action of the novel Ulysses is on uh, 16th. Uh, take place in the single revolution of the sun. That is uh, all the uh, action. Just of course we have flashbacks and flash forwards. So uh, the major, the, the present of that novel is of course 16th June 1904. The epic length novel is actually a modernist reconstruction of Homer's epic, the Odyssey. The novel follows the story of three central characters, Stephen de Dallas, Le Leopold Bloom, and his wife, Molly Bloom. These characters are more modern counterparts of Telemachus, Ulysses, and Penelope. By employing stream of consciousness technique and interior monologue, Joyce reveals the innermost thoughts and feelings of his characters. That is about the novel Ulysses. Now, let's just continue. Uh, in 1927, James Joyce published his collection of 13 poems, Poems Penny H. So it is, in fact, an anthology of poems by James Joyce, and there are 13 poems. His last work, an experimental novel, Finnegan's Wake of 1939 was a difficult read for ordinary readers. This complex novel blends the reality of life with a dream world. In 1940, after the fall of France in World War II, Joyce took his family back to Zurich in Switzerland. On 13 January 1941, following an intestinal operation, John Joyce died, James Joyce died. His body is buried in Flanten Cemetery in Zurich. James Joyce's subtle yet frank portrayal of human nature, coupled with his mastery of language and brilliant development of new literary forms, made him once one of the major figures of uh, literary modernism and among the most commanding influences on novelists of the 20th century. James Joyce's uh, story prescribed for us, Evelyn, is a classic work of modernist fiction. It was published in the journal The Irish Homestead in 1904, and later revised and republished in the Dubliners in 1914. Narrated from a third person point of view, the story reveals the thoughts of young Irish woman 
who plans to leave her miserable life in Ireland and emigrate to Argentina to seek out a happy life with her lover. As the story unfolds, Evelyn, the female protagonist, is seen looking out of the window of her father's home, reminiscing about her childhood days. She reviews the events of her life and ponders her plan to leave Dublin for a better life in Buenos Aires in Argentina. She finds her life dull, uninspiring, and even oppressive as she is burdened with the responsibility of running the household in addition to working in a shop. She's in fact working in a store. Adding to her misery is her alcoholic father's cruel and violent attitude. With her mother dead and her brother away on business, Evelyn feels tired of her life and plans to elope with Frank, a sailor and her secret lover. She feels happy to live her hard life, yet at the same time worries about fulfilling promises to her dead mother. She believes that Frank will save her from the drudgery and hopeless domestic situation. However, she is divided between the call of home and the past and the call of new experiences and the future and is unable to make a decision. Finally, the memory of her mother's unhappy life with her unfeeling father pushes her to the port where Frank is waiting to board the ship with her. But she's just about to board the ship. Evelyn loses her nerve and turns, turns away from the port. No, 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 it was impossible. Her hands clutch the iron in frenzy. Amid the seas, she send a cry of anguish. Evelyn is unable to let go of the past and her memories and instead clings to the barrier as though literally clinging to old Ireland and the past which is dead and gone, but which she cannot leave behind. The language of this story is apparently straightforward and easy to understand. However, a close reading of the text will reveal the underlying themes. The female protagonist struggle to escape oppression from her abusive and domineering father is often compared to Ireland's struggle against England for independence. Just as Evelyn's father's domineering presence in her life, England has ruled the life of Ireland directly or indirectly for long. Through the story of Evelyn, Joyce sheds light on the male domination and the discrimination of, of women of his time in Ireland. And in many ways, Evelyn typifies the difficulties faced by many Dubliners at the time. As the story ends, the reader left with many questions. Why does Evelyn change her mind at last moment? Is it her love for of, of homeland and nostalgia for the past that stopped her from going with Frank? Is it filial duty to her father and brother that makes her go back on her resolve? Or does she doubt that her life with Frank will be like her mother's life with her father? So these are some of the questions that are posed to the reader in the beginning. And now we are just going to read and explain the short story. So before uh, reading out and explaining the short story, let me just say that it's in fact a very, very uh, important story with a lot of contemporary significance as well, right? It has, of course, significance throughout the 20th century and even in 21st century. Right now we are in, again, it has a lot of significance and deals with a lot of problems. It deals with the problems of women. It leads to the problem of Ireland. It, of course, leads with uh, the uh, feminist issues. And uh, yeah, it is about Evelyn, the young lady. Evelyn is just 19 years old. She is uh, in a poor family. Her mother is dead. She has brothers, young brothers. She has a father. A fa her father is a drunkard, is an alcoholic. And because of his alcoholism and because of his uh, 
very very indisciplined life he has no money he in fact is employed and uh, by the end of the week of course uh, he spends all the money and uh, he is very very now that his wife is dead and uh, uh, yeah uh, she has to evelyn has to uh, care for the family. Evelyn has to buy provisions. Evelyn has to look after her brothers. And Evelyn uh, made a promise to her mother many years before uh, the death of her mother. Her mother asked her to look after the uh, children, like the brothers of Evelyn. So also her mother asked her to keep the family, to, to look for, to, to look after everybody, and again to keep the home together, she is asked. Evelyn is asked to keep the home together. Now uh, she is being uh, maybe, of course, ill-treated. She has to suffer a lot of violence at uh, her uh, father's uh, uh, house and um, now she has to look after now she's in deep trouble uh, she now again uh, she has again another problem she met a young man in fact uh, he is a sailor who is working in uh, ships he has uh, traveled far and wide she was working in many ships and now they are in love that is evelyn is lo in love with frank and frank uh, is asking her to go with him she is also very, very uh, interested. She wishes to, uh, of course, go with Frank, but her father doesn't like. There was, of course, a quarrel with, between Evelyn's father and Frank, and uh, Frank was threatened by her father, and Evelyn was also threatened by her father not to continue the relationship. But now Frank is just inviting her to go with him and she's dreaming of maybe a better life with Frank. But let us see what's happening. Just like uh, the kind of suspense and twist at the end of uh, the story, the cactus, uh, like again in the story of Maxine Gorky, the lover, we have again a, a very, very unexpected, surprising ending for the beautiful story, Evelyn as well. Okay, so Evelyn, we are we now we are reading this story, Evelyn, and after our reading, of course, in this session itself, we'll be discussing the questions and answers and uh, let's comments. Right, we I start the reading. Evelyn, she sat at the window watching the evening invade the avenue. Her head was leaned against the window curtains, and in her nostrils was the odor of dusty cretonne. She was tired. This is the very beginning of the story. She was standing at the window, watching the evening invade the avenue. So she is Evelyn. Evelyn is introduced, just like in a film, the camera focuses on Evelyn standing beside the window, looking out to the broad road in Dublin city. And she can see the people walking there, the buildings, houses on the other side. She lived her 19 years there. She has a lot of memories, nostalgia. And now she is thoughtful. She is doubtful. She has problems. She is just uh, leaning against the window curtains and she can feel the very smell of the dusty curtain. And you have the word avenue. Avenue is a broad road. And creton, creton is heavy cotton. Here it refers to the curtain which is made with heavy cotton and that cotton has a smell, and Evelyn is just perceiving the smell of this curtain. Now, the uh, story, okay? So this is the story, Evelyn. Evelyn, the story is about this young 19-year-old girl, very, very thoughtful, just like undergoing maybe a crisis, a conflict, maybe like Hamlet, she's now, in a bewildered situation. She's in, a, a, in fact, uh, a dilemma. To be or not to be, that is the problem. Should I go? 
should I not go? Should I go with prank? Should I continue at my father's home? Should I have a better life, a comfortable life, or should I continue my work for my brothers? That is it, right? Few people pass. Now the camera is on the city, Dublin city, the roads, the buildings, other side, beside the window, Evelyn is looking out. Few people passed. The man out of the last house passed on his way home. It's evening. Everyone goes home. She heard his footsteps clacking along the concrete pavement and afterwards crunching on the cinder path before the new red houses. Beautiful language of uh, James Joyce. Look at that. The very uh, evening, everyone goes home and we see men walking in the road and the very movement of men on road is so realistically represented here she heard his footsteps clacking what is clacking clacking is the sound of the the boot rather the bottom of the boot on gravel or tarred or wooden pavement okay so that sound and we have the crunching on the cinder path cinder path is a path which is paved with uh, wood so the boot of uh, people just fall on uh, flatten stamp on the path and the sound the very crushing sound of the boot and the stones and small little gravel we have there that is crunching on the cinder path before the new red houses one time there used to be a field there in which they used to play every evening with other people's children so she remembers evelyn is 19 years she remembers how she played with her friends in the neighborhood when she was four years five years maybe six years seven years or maybe when she was of course in her early teens 12 and 13. then a man from belfast bought the field and built houses in it again maybe this sentence uh, just uh, makes us to think that this is about real estate business right look at that it is definitely about real estate business even james joyce uh, uh, those days, in those days, he lived between 1882 and 1941. And remember uh, this particular, this story uh, that is Evelyn, it was of course published in 1904. And more than 120 years ago, James Joyce writes about real estate business. Look at that. One time there used to be a field in uh, there in which they used to play every evening with other children. Then a man from Belva, Belfast, Belfast is capital of Northern Ireland, Belfast bought the field and built houses in it. Not like their little brown houses, but brick, bright brick houses with shining roofs. This is exactly about the huge big apartments and uh, the uh, builders and uh, the real estate mafia okay so the children are, this is nostalgic memory nostalgia nostalgic memories of evening okay uh, then a man man from belfast bought the field and built houses in it not like they are little brown houses but bright brick houses with shining roofs the children of the avenue used to play together in that field the the the, the divines the waters the duns, little Keog, the cripple, she and her brothers and sisters. So all these, the divines refers to, okay, the family of the divines, like the surname, like you say, the Smiths, the house of the Smith, like you say, maybe the Geralds, the children, the family of Geralds, like uh, the Waters, surname Water, okay, the family, the children of Waters, the duns means the family of duns, the children of duns. Little Keog the cripple. Little Keog is a handicap. I mean, a child with some maybe right, some physically challenged. Right, that he is of course a cripple. Uh, yeah, that in fact not he. She. It's it's a it's a girl. A little Keog the cripple. 
she and her brothers and sis uh, she and her brothers that's of course right i'm sorry a uh, little chaos the cripple a lame child and she and her brothers and sisters is evelyn and her brothers and her sisters so a lot of children from the neighborhood playing in the field many years ago and now as evelyn is looking out to the window evelyn remembers everything she remembers everything ernest however never played ernest is evelyn's brother okay young brother ernest however never played he was too uh, he was too uh, yeah not young brother of course uh, and i mean yeah, older older ns however never played he was too grown up right that is right ns is elder or older to evelyn uh, and her father used often to hunt them in out of the field with his black thorn stick so this is the portrayal of uh, evelyn's father so even when evelyn was a young girl as a child her father was of course rather violent he used to beat the children he used to just uh, hunt them when they were playing with their uh, friends uh, in the field okay even uh, her father used often used to hunt them in out of the field with his black thorn stick but usually little keog used to keep nix keep nix keep nix mix keep watch so the cripple child little keog will watch will be watching will be watchful will keep watch w what what uh, is uh, little keog looking for little keog is looking for whether evelyn's dad is coming if evelyn's dad is coming of course he would be punishing them so uh, little keog a uh, keog the cripple uh, child is looking for being very watchful okay keep nix and call out when he saw her father coming so when evelyn's father is coming little keog the crippled baby will uh, child will uh, just uh, call out still they seem to have been rather happy then her father was not so bad then and besides her mother was alive okay so during her childhood days her father was not completely bad of course this is very important so there were she remembers right as a child sometimes her uh, uh, her father was of course nice to uh, them all the children so uh, her father was not so bad then and besides her mother was alive so those were of course happy days for her her father was not very bad her mother was alive that was a long time ago it was a long time ago she and her brothers and sisters were all grown up now her mother was dead now tizi dan tizi dan is one of the dan fam, uh, family member tizi dan was dead that is of course uh, the mother of tc uh, i mean the dan family tizi dan was dead too and the waters had gone back to england another family the waters they have gone back to england everything changes now she was going to go away like the others to leave her home so joy james joyce introduced the heroine evelyn she has just uh, he has just uh, spoken to us about evelyn's childhood days and now james joyce tells us what is evelyn's problem evelyn is today getting ready to leave her home why and the reader reader uh, is thinking why why should evelyn leave her home and that question is discussed in the subsequent passages evelyn has a lot of problem and all the problem is told to us in the next two pages home she looked around the room reviewing all its familiar objects which she had dusted once a week for so many years so the house is full of dust and she has to clean the dust every now and then so dust is something that is uh, not good dust is something that is causing troubles to you if you are allergic of course you will suffer from maybe uh, some sickness right uh, if there is dust in the room so uh, she had to clean the room uh, 
every week because there is so much dust there. Now, she had dusted once a week for so many years, wondering where on earth all the dust came from. She doesn't know where dust comes from. Perhaps she would never see again those familiar objects from which she had never dreamed of being divided. Okay, so there are certain things that she doesn't want to, of course, part with. And yet during all those years, she had never found out the name of the priest whose yellowing photograph hung on the wall above the broken harmonium beside the colored print of the promises name made to Blessed Margaret Mary Al Alacoc. So we have uh, a photograph of a priest on the wall. Evelyn doesn't know the name of the uh, priest. There again, uh, we have uh, the uh, reference to a saint and that saint is a nun. That is of course, Blessed Mary, uh, Margaret Mary Alcock. Uh, in fact, um, Margaret Mary Alcock is blessed. She is soon going to be a saint, a French, a French nun beatified in 1864 and canonized in 1920. She claimed to have visions of Christ in which he asked her to prom promote devotion to his sacred heart as a symbol of love, mercy, and salvation. The nun was bedridden for four years after developing paralysis then made after made what appeared to be a miraculous recovery. That's about this uh, the saint, rather the blessed Margaret Mary Alcock. He had been a school friend of her father. So the uh, photograph of the priest is on the wall. So that priest was, of course, a school friend of her father. Whenever he showed the photograph to a visitor, her father used to pass it with a casual word. He is in Melbourne now. So that priest whose photograph is on the wall is right now in Melbourne, and that is just reiterated by her Evelyn's father. She had consented to go away, to leave her home. Who has consented? Evelyn had. She had consented to go away, to leave her home. Was that wise? She tried to weigh each side of the question. In her home, anyway, she had shelter and food. She had those whom she had known all her life about her. Of course, she had to work hard, both in the house and at a business. What would they say of her in the stores when they found out that she had run away with a fellow? Say she was a fool, perhaps, and her place would be filled up by advertisement. Miss Gavan would be glad. She had always had an edge on her, especially whenever they were, there were people listening. Miss Hill, don't you see these ladies are waiting? Look lively, Miss Hill, please. She would not cry many tears at leaving the stores. Okay, so here, James Joyce uh, tells us the story, tells us that Evelyn has decided to leave her home. And Evelyn is just thinking, what will happen if I leave? People will be speaking about me. Sometimes people might speak bad of me because I'm leaving, I'm just eloping with a man. And now we understand that she's working in a store. So there are a lot of other women, other girls. And one of them is Miss Gavin. And Miss Gavin is something like a superior to uh, Evelyn. And Evelyn uh, thinks that Miss Gavin would be happy that that uh, e Evelyn has just uh, gone away because Gavin tried uh, to just uh, to 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 dominate Evelyn quite often. So uh, that is because Miss Gavin doesn't like, and maybe Gavin would be happy that she has done something bad. There are people who are happy about the wrong deeds of. Uh, others. So understand that he just uh, running away, eloping with somebody is not something uh, that is good. So uh, Evelyn is, of course, compelled to do something against the uh, family, against, of course, morality, against religion, against her own conscience, because she has so much problems at home. Her father is an alcoholic. 
she has to work hard she has to work hard in the home she has to work hard in of course a store and that's the problem but in her new home now she thinks of going with frank she thinks of living in a different home frank's home in her new home in a distant unknown country it would not be like that then she would be married so this story is also about marriage should one get married why what's in the marriage what happened to the marriage of evelyn's mother and father what can possibly happen to evelyn when she get married to frank is it is marriage is honey and milk these questions are discussed but in her new home in a distant unknown country it would not be like that then she would be married she evelyn people would treat her with respect then she would not be treated as her mother had been even now though she was over 19 she sometimes felt herself in danger of her father's violence so evelyn's father is at times very very violent and she is afraid of the violence of uh, evelyn's father so as i read this story of james joyce i remember the very story the novel by uh, arindadi roy the indian novelist and the roy is uh, got a small things is about how mamachi and uh, ammu were ill treated by their husbands mamachi ill treated by papachi ammu ill treated by baba ammu ill treated by papachi her father again so she knew it was that that had given her the palpitations palpitations right whenever evelyn thinks of her father the violence of her father she has palpitations palpitations rising pulsations her, her pulsations become louder and louder and faster and faster when they grow they were growing up now again flashback to the childhood days of evelyn and her uh, brothers and sisters when they were growing up he had never gone for her like he used to go for harry and ernest because she was a girl but laterally he had begun to threaten her and say what he would do to her only for her dead mother's sake and now she had nobody to protect her this is evelyn's problem evelyn had nobody to protect her evelyn has no one to protect her ernest was dead and harry who was in the church decorating business was nearly always down somewhere in the country besides the invariable squabble squabbly squarrel for money on saturday nights had begun to weary her unspeakably so every saturday there is some quarrel like uh, evelyn asks for some money to her father and her father doesn't give her anything because she has to buy provisions she has to buy grain cereals flour oil and other things vegetables fruits and all so she needs some money for that so every saturday night there is some squabble and squabble is fighting there is fighting in the family she always gave her entire wages seven and what is evelyn's wage christian evelyn's wage is seven shillings and that seven shilling is used for the family she always gave her entire wages seven shillings and harry always sent up what he could but the trouble was to get any money from her father so she has to buy provisions for the family so she has to get money from one of her brothers harry he also has to get money from her father but her father doesn't give harry sends some money he gets but her father doesn't give anything he said she used to squander the money that she had no head that he wasn't going to give her his hard-earned hard -earned money to throw about the streets and much more for he was usually fairly bad of a saturday night in the end he would give her the money and ask her had she any intention of buying sunday's dinner then she had to rush out as quickly as she could and do her marketing 
holding her black leather purse tightly in her hand as she elbowed her way through the crowds and returning home late under her lord of provisions. This is the very drudgery. This is the very troublesome, struggling life of Evelyn. Just working hard for the family. She had hard work to keep the house together and to see that the two young children who had been left to her charge went to school regularly and got their meals regularly. This is it. She has young uh, brothers and she has to feed them. She has to send them to school. And this is, it was hard work, a hard life. But now that she was about to leave, he did not find it a wholly undesirable life. And now, of course, Evelyn is in love with Frank, the sailor, and she has some hope because she's just uh, about to leave the home. She's going to leave the house. She's going to elope with Frank, her lover. Now the story of Frank and Evelyn, very good narrative style of James Joyce. She was about to explore another life with Frank. Frank was very kind, manly, open-hearted. She was to go away with him by the night board to be his wife and to live with him in Buenos Aires in Argentina, where he had a home waiting for her. How well she remembered the first time she had seen him. He was lodging in a house on the main road where she used to visit. It seemed a few weeks ago, he was standing at the gate, his peaked cap pushed back on his head and his hair tumbled forward over a face of bronze. Description of Frank the sailor with whom Evelyn is in love right now. Then they had come to know each other. He used to meet her outside the stores every evening and see her home. He took her to see the Bohemian Girl the Bohemian Girl is an opera and uh, Evelyn uh, went to watch the opera in the company of her lover, Frank. And she felt elated as she sat in an unaccustomed part of the theater with him. He was awfully fond, fond of music and sang a little. People knew that they were courting, they were in love. And when he sang about the last that loves a sailor, she always felt pleasantly confused. He used to call her Poppins out of fun. So what did Frank call Evelyn? Funly, in, in, in a jovious, funny way, Poppins. First of all, it had been an excitement for her to have a fellow and then she had begun to like him. He had tales of distant countries. Frank had started as a dead boy at a pound a month on a ship of Allen Line going out to Canada. Story of Frank. Frank told her the names of the ships he had been on and the names of the different services. Frank had sailed through the Straits of Magellan and Frank told her stories of the terrible Patagonians. Patagonians are the natives of Patagonia, a region in Southern Argentina between the Andes Mountains and the Atlantic Ocean, they are thought to be nomadic and very, very dangerous. So Frank had traveled far and wide and Frank tells uh, Evelyn all his stories and experiences. He had fallen on his feet in Buenos Aires, he said, and had come over to the country, old country, just for a holiday. Of course, her father had uh, found out the affair and had forbidden her to have anything to say to him. So Evelyn's father just knew that Evelyn was in love with Frank and her father just warned her not to continue the relationship. I know these sailor chaps, he said. One day he had quarreled with Frank and after that she had to meet her lover secretly. So Evelyn's father knows that Evelyn is in love with Frank and uh, one day uh, her father quarreled with Frank and she is one not to meet him anymore and uh, afterwards they meet very secretly. The evening deepened in the avenue present at the moment, the very evening. 
Evelyn is just looking out, getting ready to go away from the bothering, perplexing, pestering house. The evening deepened in the avenue. The white of two letters in her lap grew indistinct. She has written two letters because she's going away. Her family members, her father and her brothers, they are not going to meet her anymore. And she has letters for them. One was to Harry. One of the letters is to Harry. The other was to her father. Ernest had been her favorite, but she liked Harry too. These are the names of her brothers. Her father was becoming old lately. She noticed he would miss her. Sometimes he could be very nice. Not long before, when she had been laid up for a day, he had read her out a ghost story and made toast for her at the fire. So this is the reason why Evelyn likes her father. When she was, of course, laid up for a day with some sickness, some fever, some temperature, some disease, her father read out a ghost story for her and he also made toast for her at the fire. And of course, she loves her father for that. And she's upset. Should I go away? Should I be with my lover, Frank? Should I care for my father? Should I care for my younger brothers? What should I do? But this work in the house, the work in the store, the tight schedule, she is in a dilemma. Another day when their mother was alive, they had all gone for a picnic to the Hill of Houth. The Hill of Houth is in fact a, 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 a seashore resort, which is of course a tourist place for recreation, making merry and all, and often people go there. She remembered her father putting on her mother's bonnet to make the children laugh. So her father, of course, was sometimes very loving and kind and uh, happy. And there were, of course, wonderful, funny, delightful moments for them. And she remembers a few of those moments. Her time was running out. Now present again. Now she has to go to the harbor. She has to go to the port. Frank is waiting. Boat is waiting. She has to go away. Time is running very fast. The clock is ticking very fast. Her time was running out, but she continued to sit by the window, leaning her head against the window curtain, inhaling the odor of dusty cretonne. Down far in the avenue, she could hear a street organ playing. She knew the air, strange that it should come that very night to remind her of the promise to her mother. What's her promise to her mother? Her promise to keep the home together as long as she could. She remembered the last night of her mother's illness. She was again in the closed dark room at the other side of the hall and outside she heard a melancholy air of Italy. The organ player had been ordered to go away and given sixpence. She remembered her father strutting back into the sick room saying, so this is in fact uh, her memory of the last moments of her mother. Her mother was dying. Her mother was suffering from illness and the last moments. Damned Italians coming over here. As she mused, the pitiful vision of her mother's life laid in its spell on the very quick of her being. The life of commonplace sacrifices closing in final craziness. She trembled as she heard again her mother's voice saying constantly with foolish insistence. So these are the last words of her mother, dying moments of her mother, her last utterance. Derevon, Derevon, Saron, Derevon, Saron. In fact, Derevon, Saron is a Gaelic. Gaelic is a dialect of uh, Ireland, a Gaelic dialect. And uh, this particular utterance of uh, their mother, the last utterance of their mother mean, the end of pleasure is pain. The end of pleasure is pain. So this is the last words of uh, Evelyn's mother. Evelyn's mother says that uh, the end of pleasure is pain. And with these words, Evelyn's mother is dying. So this has a lot of significance. The end of pleasure is pain. What does it mean? Now, their father is a drunkard. He drinks because he wants pleasure. 
And if he is leading such a life of alcoholic, of an alcoholic, of course, his end would be rather painful. Similarly, the end of pleasure is pain. Now, Evelyn is going to do something. She's going to go with uh, uh, Frank. So she is, now she thinks that she has a lot of work to do. She's looking for pleasure. She's lo looking for comfort. She's looking for joy. And maybe as her mother says, the end of pleasure is pain. Maybe now Evelyn goes with Frank for looking for pleasure. Of course, she may end up in pain. So all that glitters is not gold. Like the end of pleasure is pain. She stood up in a sudden impulse of terror. So this, this word of, their, of her mother is frightening her. End of pleasure is pain. She stood up in a sudden impulse of terror. Escape. She must escape. Frank would save her. He would give her life, perhaps love too, but she wanted to live. Why should she be unhappy? She had a right to happiness. Frank would take her in his arms, fold her in his arms. He would save her. She stood among the swaying crowd in the station at the north wall. Now she has come to the uh, station. She has left her home. She's about to go with Frank. She stood among the swaying crowd. There's a great crowd, a lot of people moving to and fro, swaying crowd, moving crowd in the station at the north wall. He held her hand and she knew that he was speaking to her. So in the distance, Evelyn saw her lover Frank waving his hands. He held her hand and, uh, okay, he held her hand. Yeah, he's holding her hand. He held her hand and she knew that he was speaking to her, saying something about the passage over and over again. The station was full of soldiers with brown baggages. Through the wide doors of the sheds, she caught a glimpse of the black mass of the boat. So in the distance, she sees the boat, the, the, the very black, uh, through the wide doors of the sheds, she caught a glimpse of the black mass of the boat lying in beside the quay wall with illumined portholes. So she is now uh, standing with Frank on the quay. Quay is a dock or a wharf or a, a platform projecting out from the harbor from which of course people can just get board the uh, boat and the ship. So uh, she is just standing on the quay. She answered nothing. She felt her cheek pale and cold and out of a maze of distress, she prayed to God to direct her, to show her what was her duty. The boat blew a long mournful whistle into the mist. If she went tomorrow, she would be on the sea with Frank, steaming towards Argentina, Buenos Aires. A passage had been booked. Could she still draw back after all he had done for her? Frank loves her. He has booked tickets for her, made all the arrangements. Could she still draw back after all he had done for her? Her distress awoke a nausea in her body and she kept moving her lips in silent, fervent prayer. Now she feels some kind of vomiting sensation because she is in deep trouble. She faces some kind of conflict to be or not to be, to go with Frank or to continue at home, to have pleasure or to have pain, to have comfort or to have misery. A bell clanged upon her heart. Heart is just pounding faster and faster, palpitations. A bell clanged upon her heart. She felt him seize her hand. Come, Frank is inviting her. All the seas of the world tumble about her heart. Now she feels as she sees in, she's in a whirlpool. She sees of, of uh, uh, all the seas of the world tumble about her heart. He was drawing her into them. Frank is pulling her down into this whirlpool. 
he would drown her. She gripped with both hands at the iron railing. Now she's holding on to the iron railing on the harbor. Come, Frank is pulling her. No, 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 it was impossible. Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy. Amid the seas, she sent a cry of anguish. No, I'm not coming. I cannot come. Evelyn, Frank, calling her. Evelyn, come, come with me. Evie, this is, this is what Frank calls her, Evie. Evelyn, come, Evie, come. He rushed beyond the barrier and called to her to follow her. He was sh shouted at to go on, but he still called to her. She set her white face to him. She's very pale, passive, like a helpless animal. Her eyes gave him no sign of love or farewell or recognition. Now, look at that. This is the ending of the story. She's on the platform. She could just board the boat, but she stands there, pale, emotionless, no love for her lover, no love at all, no farewell, no bye bye, no recognition. She's standing there lifeless because to her, what is important is life at her father's. She has promises with her mother. Her mother asks her, try to look after the family. Just try your best to keep the house together as long as you can. Now, of course, we'll come to the questions and uh, as we discuss the questions, we'll have better thoughts. Who was little Keog and how did he help the children at play? So Keog is a boy. So little Keog was the cripple from the neighborhood of uh, Evelyn, the heroine of the story, and she was, of course, hunted. Evelyn and her brothers and sisters were hunted by their father, and Keog, the cripple, will uh, keep watch for their father, Evelyn's father, and when their father would come searching for them, Keog would call out and they can go hiding or they can go back to home. Otherwise, their father would just punish them when they are playing in the field. Next question. Why did Evelyn think that she would never again see the familiar objects in her room? Evelyn thought that she would never see the familiar objects in her room again because she was decided to go with her lover, Frank. That was the last day at home. Who was Miss Gavan and why would she be glad? Miss Gavin was a co-worker in the store uh, of uh, uh, in the store where Evelyn was working. So Miss Gavin is a co-worker of uh, Evelyn, the heroine, and uh, she would be glad uh, about uh, the elopement of uh, Evelyn. Okay, uh, and uh, because there are some misunderstandings and some kind of hostility between the superior, more powerful. Miss Gavin and uh, Evelyn. So uh, Gavin would be happy when she hear that Evelyn ran away with someone because this is something against the very, very morality of uh, the people of uh, uh, the then Britain or Ireland. Next question, what gave Evelyn the palpitations? Uh, Evelyn had palpitations or uh, more uh, 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 loud, pulsation or heartbeat because she was afraid of the violence of her father and uh, she thought that her father would be violent and each time she thinks about the violence of her father she has pulsations or palpitations. How did Evelyn's father treat her? Evelyn's father treated her violently very 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 often. All right uh, now after the death of her mother uh, he became a drunkard or other he became more alcoholic and he's very rude and uh, he would be just quarreling with her. Uh, but 
before the death of uh, her mother when her mother was alive her father was nice to her sometimes of course there were joyful moments and she has also good memories because one day when she was suffering from sickness her father just uh, read out a ghost story for her and he also prepared some food for her so but um, uh, overall her attitude is of course rather um, uh, uh, fearful she's afraid of uh, her father because his fa her father is a drunkard and he can be violent next question sixth question why did evelyn think that she had nobody to protect her uh, she thought that she had nobody to protect her because her father was a drunkard and uh, he was very violent and her mother was uh, dead and now that uh, the father is a drunkard and mother is no more she thinks that she has no one to protect her and uh, she ha she thought that she has to work all the time next question what do you think evelyn's mother meant by repeating uh, dere won surround the very uh, repetition of the phrase dere won surround is uh, yeah uh, it, it means the end of pleasure is pain. It's in fact a, a dialect of uh, the Gaelic uh, Irish language. Uh, Gaelic is an, one of the dialects of the Irish languages, Irish language, and uh, uh, the very uh, uh, dialectical uh, phrase, there uh, one surround means uh, the end of pleasure is pain. And uh, Evelyn uh, mother says that uh, if you look for pleasure, you will have some trouble. If you look for pleasure, you will end up in pain. Okay, now next question. Why was Evelyn burdened with hard work? Evelyn was burdened with hard work. Number one, because her mother died. Number two, because her father was an alcoholic. Number three, she has young brothers who are of course uh, very young and she has to feed them. She has to of course uh, educate them. So her life is very, very miserable because she has to work for the family. She also has to, she has to work inside the family. She also has to work outside. She has to, she's working in a store as well. Number nine, why was it difficult to get money from Evelyn's father? Evelyn's father is a drunkard and he uses the money for uh, drinking and he's squandering all the money away. And uh, of course, uh, it, because of that reason, it was very difficult to get uh, money from her father. And her father was always saying that Evelyn would squander the money, waste the money. But at the end of the day, on Saturdays, of course, he would give her some money to buy provisions for the house, for the family. What does Evelyn's father mean when he tells her, I know these sailor chaps. So Evelyn's father knew that Evelyn was in love with a sailor who was named uh, Frank. And uh, uh, when he knew that she was in love with uh, Frank, he knew that maybe uh, Evelyn would elope with Frank and uh, Evelyn's father just warned her that these people, sailors are uh, of course rather shrewd and clever and you cannot trust them. So they, they will only deceive you. So. Uh, this is something, right? Uh, Evelyn's father tells her that these people are not trustworthy. These people are not dependable. They will uh, just uh, uh, keep you in trouble. They will put you in trouble. They will just leave you. They will just uh, abandon you and you will be in trouble. So uh, she is one not to continue her relationship with Frank the sailor. Next question. In what ways is Evelyn like a helpless animal? Evelyn is like a helpless animal because uh, she could not go with uh, uh, Frank on one side. She is in love with Frank. She cannot go with Frank. She uh, feels that she is not loved by, cared for by, there is, uh, the, uh, by her father. She thinks that she is not protected by anybody. She thinks that there isn't anyone to care for her. And uh, she now that, of course, she cannot go with uh, Frank, she thinks that... Uh, she's like a helpless animal now the next question why did evelyn have to meet frank in secret uh, evelyn has to meet frank in secret because her father is not happy with the affair or the relationship between frank and uh, evelyn and uh, evelyn's father once quarreled with uh, frank as well next question 
what made Evelyn think that her father was a nice man? There are uh, uh, some uh, uh, important reasons for Evelyn to think that her father is a nice man because once when she was laid up, she was suffering from a disease and she was at home taking rest. And uh, that day, her father stood beside her and read a ghost story for her, number one. Number two, he prepared some food for her. Number three, there were moments during the childhood days when their father was rather jovial and uh, funny and uh, of course, uh, uh, days in which, of course, uh, their father cared for their mother. And because of this reason, she thinks that her father is, of course, a nice man. Maybe uh, she can understand that it is because of alcoholism that her father is behaving in a very, very rude way. Next question. What reminded Evelyn of her promise to her mother and what was the promise, right? So now uh, when Evelyn is decided to go with Frank, she is reminded of her promise with her mother. and. Uh, 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 she uh, cannot go with Frank and uh, uh, her promise was, her mother asked her to promise that she would keep the home together as long as she could. Now she has to stay with her father, she has to stay with her brothers, she has to work for the family and she has to keep her promise to her mother that she will keep the family, she will keep the home as long as she can. She will keep the family together as long as she can. So she has, she cannot go away. Now she has to keep the family together. If she is going away, who will keep the family together? She's in a trouble, dilemma. And next question, what, what are Evelyn's expectations about Frank? Evelyn thinks that Frank is going to be uh, a nice husband to her. She thinks that uh, Frank's family will respect her, care for her. She's going to have a comfortable life at uh, Frank's home. And uh, she thinks that she's going to be safe with Frank. She thinks that uh, she's going to have love with uh, Frank and her uh, his, his family. Okay. Uh, she thinks that she's going to have a better life with Frank. Next question. Her distress evoked a nausea in her body and she kept moving her lips in silent fervent prayer. Why was Evelyn in distress? Evelyn on the harbor was in deep distress because she was undergoing a conflict. Her love for her family, her love for her mother, her love for her father, her love for her brothers on one side, the other side, her love for Frank. A lot of promises from Frank. Now, a promise again to her mother. Conflict, to be or not to be. To be at home, to be with Frank. Now, all this is creating a lot of conflict and she feels like vomiting. Next question. Why, in your opinion, did Evelyn refuse to go with Frank to Buenos Aires? According to me and uh, maybe most of the readers, Evelyn refuses to go with Frank because one reason she made a promise to her mother that she would keep the home together as long as she can. That is the promise she gave her mother and her mother is more important to her than Frank. Number two, she doesn't know what's going to happen to her in uh, this marriage with Frank because she knows that uh, old marriage is not honey and milk because she saw the life of her father and mother. Their life was not happy. Their father was a drunkard. And their father used to, of course, be rude to their mother. Their father is, of course, her father is rude to her as well. So uh, maybe Frank can also be the same. He can be rude to her. He can be, of course, violent to her. He may change his attitude. His love may just deteriorate. He could be just selfish. All this romance would just wither away. So because of her greater commitment to the family, because of greater promise to her mother, because of her greater love to her brothers and mother and, bro and father, she changes her mind, refuses to go with Frank to Argentina. And she remembers what her mother said. That is the Gaelic expression, Deravon Saraun, the end of pleasure is pain. Next question, 
Do you think Evelyn was really in love with Frank before she decided against leaving Ireland? Why? Evelyn was, of course, in love with Frank, but really in love. And this is again a, a very, very confusing issue. Real love. What is real love? What is real love? Evelyn is just 19 years. And the teenage, teenage is, of course, a time in which we have hormonal changes. And Evelyn is undergoing a lot of hormonal changes. She wants to be physically loved. She wants to have, of course, uh, the kind of uh, uh, right uh, love of uh, maybe a man because she is in her teen. She's in, she's, of course, uh, uh, right, uh, having a lot of hormonal changes in the body. That, that, that attraction to the other sex is there and Frank is there. So this is just, maybe it's, it's a kind of romance, right? Okay. And now comes the problem, real love. What is real love? So here, uh, of course, um, uh, Evelyn, now because her, she has a lot of problems again, right? She is not loved by her. She doesn't have any kind of comfort or she doesn't have any peace or joy or love or safety at home because her father is rude, drunkard, problems at home. She's in deep, deep trouble. She has to work hard, suffering and struggling, fed up with life. Somebody offering a refuge and that somebody offering refuge is Frank. She's just uh, in a dilemma, attracted by Frank, tempted by Frank, promises of Frank, what to do, that is there. Should I go with Frank? Should I be at home? This problem is there. Total confusion. And she makes the right decision, just like a new woman, just like an empowered lady, just like a feminist, she took the right decision because going away with Frank is just getting married. She will soon get married to Frank and marriage to maybe a new woman, a liberated woman, a feminist is bondage. Marriage is slavery. Marriage is having a husband. Marriage is having a father-in-law. Marriage is having a mother-in-law. Marriage is having, of course, sons and daughters and children. Marriage is commitment. Commitment is often troublesome. She saw the marriage of her mother and her father. Her father was, of course, a drunkard. And her father didn't care for her mother. Her father, because of his alcoholism, didn't care for the children, often very, very rude and violent. So this can happen to her again. She knows that this romantic moments with Frank would fade away. All right. So maybe she was not really in love with uh, Frank. Real love is, of course, something abstract. Real love could be something, of course, uh, maybe platonic or ideal kind of love in which, okay, there is equal uh, equality. There is, of course, uh, mutual respect and understanding, but she never saw mutual respect or understanding in marriage. And she's rather skeptical and doubtful that the marriage with Frank is not going to be rather good. And she has more commitment. She knows that Frank cannot love her like her mom. She knows that maybe Frank cannot love her like her dad. Although her dad is a drunkard, she doesn't know anything because she doesn't know where he is going. Frank has offerings, a lot of offerings, but who knows where Frank will take her? Who knows what his nature is? Okay, so do you think Evelyn was in real was was really in love with Frank before she re, uh, decided against leaving Ireland? Okay, so uh, she was not really in love with uh, Frank, right? It was just an uh, an infatuation or an attraction. Next question: uh, Answer answer the 
following questions in a paragraph each paragraph question she tried to weigh each side of the question explain so uh, evelyn is just uh, thinking about the different aspects of her decision what will happen if i go with frank what will happen if i continue here so continuing at home is again a big trouble she will have to work struggle will continue problems will continue but going with frank is again mysterious doesn't know what's going to happen anything can happen maybe it, it it could be a joyful life it can also be a miserable life sometimes uh see things can be rather difficult whatever happened to her mother can happen to her and she doesn't want that to happen to her and she doesn't want to get married so evelyn tried she tried to weigh each side of the question explain that is she is thinking about to continue at home or to go with frank next question of course you can write about the textual things as well right evelyn scotch with frank okay so evelyn uh, was working in a store she is in a house where uh, she has a lot of problems her mother is no more her father is an alcoholic she has younger brothers and sisters she has to work for them a lot of problems at home now she is working in the store and there is someone who is smiling at her who says that uh, he loves her and she thinks that maybe uh, it would be nice that uh, i live with him and she goes with uh, him for maybe having a cup of tea she goes to the uh, theater to watch an opera there are of course some uh, fun and joy and some little bit of romance there but maybe it is very very difficult for her to go with frank forever because she is not sure or rather she has she has of course uh, uh, more promises at home and and she decides not to go so it was just a kind of uh, infatuation what she had uh, uh, towards frank was an initial maybe uh, uh, immature kind of attraction to this young man or the sailor frank his stories his adventurous trips his experiences all that just attracted her and to her more significant is her family her promise her personality her identity next question the theme of oppression and subjugation this story is about feminist issues the story is about oppression and suppression about subjugation oppression of women subjugation of women evelyn's mother is suppressed oppressed her father is very rude her father is a drunkard he married her and marriage is marriage is a commitment marriage is a commitment marriage is a promise evelyn's father married her mother and promised that okay they just promise each other that we shall be loyal to each other we shall be loving and uh, considerate and kind to each other we shall care for each other and when you decide to marry somebody you should just uh, just uh, remain committed commitment is important in marriage and now Evelyn didn't see any kind of commitment in the marriage of her mother and her father. It was just marriage to her or to her mother was a bondage, a slavery, a, a, a suppression, a subjugation. All right. And uh, in the 19th century, 20th century, and even in 21st century, marriage is a subjugation. A, a male uh, is, of course, uh, uh, the, 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 we have patriarchal society in a patriarchal society female or the women wives mothers daughters sisters they are again suppressed and subjugated so this story is about suppression it's about violence it's about of course uh, oppression okay uh, evelyn is compelled to work hard evelyn is asked to work for the family she has to work for her brothers and sisters she has to work for her she has to cook she has to work at home she has to work in a store think of all that so 
the story is about oppression and subjugation. Now we come to the next question. Nostal theme, uh, nostalgia as a predominant theme in the story. Yes, a part of the story is about uh, what happened in the past. Evelyn in the beginning, uh, standing beside the window, looks out to the Dublin city and uh, uh, sh she uh, is just uh, uh, traveling or she just, uh, uh, her, her thoughts go back to the past. She remembers those wonderful days as a young girl, three-year-old girl, four-year-old girl, five-year-old girl. She played with the other children in the neighborhood. She has a lot of wonderful moments. And now all those days are gone. Now, as a teenager, or in, in, she's just 19 years. As a 19-year-old girl, she has to work for the family. She is toiling for the working hard. And uh, uh, she remembers those wonderful days in the company of the other children, making fun, games. She also remembers those moments she had with her mother, love and care and consideration and, and, and comfort at home with mother. She also remembers those days her father was nice to her, telling her stories, reading her stories, cooking food for her. Despite being an alcoholic and an, a, a, a violent drunkard, she loves her father because there were moments in the past she was he was nice. So the story, of course, uh, to a certain extent about uh, nostalgia, not a predominant theme, but nostalgia is also a theme of the story. Next question, dust as a symbol in the story. Okay, so uh, we, we read that uh, once a week, Evelyn has to clean the house because this is a house. Her house is a house which is, uh, which is often um, covered in dust. And she's wondering, where does all this dust come from? Where do all this dust come from? And we understand that, yeah. Maybe dust is not just the very dust. It is symbolically re referring to the very problems, the physical, the social, the familial, the economic, the financial. Okay, the personal problems Evelyn is in. And every week she has to clean the house and the dust doesn't end. It still continues. Similarly, she has a lot of problems. So all the problems in her family, all the like her uh, younger siblings, drunkard father, long lost mother, working hard at home and, and in the store, all these problems are symbolically. So the dust is dust is causing a lot of problem. For Dust is causing, of course, uh, suffocation for her. Similarly, problems causing a lot of trouble, right? So dust is yeah, a symbol in the story. Dust is a symbol of botherations, suffocation, suppression, violence. Next question. No, no, no. It was impossible. Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy. Comment on the significance of Evelyn's refusal, refusal to go with Frank. So these are the last words of Evelyn in the story, Evelyn of James Joyce. No, 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 no. Now she is undergoing a conflict. She's in a dilemma, to be or not to be. Should I go with Frank, my lover? Should I be at home and uh, continue to keep the family together, the house together and be true to my mother? I gave a promise to my mother. My mother asked me to keep the house together. Now, should I go with Frank, my lover? She is in trouble. She is, this is her dilemma. And she was thinking all the day, this story is, of course, a story that happened in maybe hours. Wonderful narrative style of uh, James Joyce. Again, 
flashbacks and flash forwards, interior monologue, stream of consciousness technique, we have all that together there. So suddenly, while standing on the harbor, when she is being implored by her lover to go with him, she has that realization, no, I must not go. No, 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 no. I have better promises. I have greater duty. I must care for my brothers. I must be with my dad. All the way in Rangar, I am her, his daughter. I must be with him. And she may also be aware of the fact that marriage is going to be ens enslaving her. So it's going to be slavery. So she doesn't want to, of course, subjugate herself to a patriarchal society in marriage. So she says, no, no, no. I'm not coming with you. I don't want to be your wife. I don't want to be trapped in marriage. Now we have the essay question. James Joyce Evelyn depicts the predicament of women in the male dominated society. Yes, absolutely. This is, of course, a feminist story. We have a lot of feminist issues discussed in this story. So the story is a very, very powerful representation of uh, the predicament of the problem of women in a male dominated or rather a, a patriarchal society. See, this is a story which uh, illustrates the fact that marriage is slavery. Marriage is becoming somebody's wife. Marriage is, of course, uh, becoming a slave. Marriage is begetting children. Marriage is pregnancy. Sometimes marriage can be abortion. Marriage can be, of course, uh, like uh, bringing up children. Marriage is a host of uh, a number of, uh, it, it, it is in fact uh, shackles, chains. So it is about the issues of women. Through marriage, we become part of the patriarchal society. We surrender ourselves to the patriarch, husband, father. All right. So that issue. So Evelyn fell in love with Frank for some time, but she doesn't want to get married because she saw what happened to her mother. And she has, again, now look at the younger brothers. Okay. Her mother had to, to, to conceive many a time and maybe too much pregnancy and too much conceptions is of course not healthy for women, not healthy, right? Every year, maybe every every year, right? Be giving birth, looking after the kids. That could be the reason why their mother died and their father is a drunkard again. So many children in the family. So of course, uh, the very miserable condition of women in a male dominated society is, okay, you get married and uh, your husband, if your husband is, of course, responsible and committed and loyal to you, okay, you also feel that, uh, yeah, no problem. Maybe, yeah, I will continue, right? It's good, yeah, I, I'm happy. You you have some meaning in your marriage, right? But when, you, when your partner is not committed to you or your marriage or your family, it is just uh, slavery. So uh, this is, in fact, uh, the story, Evelyn, is a depiction of the pathetic condition of women in a male-dominated society. Now, the next essay question. Of course, uh, please write about uh, the uh, story aspect, like what happens in the marriage of uh, Evelyn's father and uh, mother. What uh, uh, is, is the very, very pathetic, miserable life of Evelyn working for them as a cook, uh, working in the house, buying provisions, uh, no money, nobody helping going out and working in the store okay a lot of problems no rest at all no rest at all okay a lot of problems now the second question attempt a critical analysis of the major themes of evelyn so what are the uh, 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 themes of the story evelyn so this story is about number one marriage number two it's about bringing up children it's about parenting it's about alcoholism, it's about addiction, drug addiction, alcoholism. It's again, it's again about feminism, it's about marriage, it's about child 
uh, what is it uh, bringing up children okay it's about pregnancy okay so a lot of issues right uh, discussed here and again it's about women empowerment that is again another issue is about women empowerment empowering women and we understand that uh, um, Evelyn by the end of the story is uh, decided not to get married okay so uh, with that of course we can just uh, come to the end of uh, the discussion of this wonderful uh, short story by James Joyce okay so thank you so much uh, for listening may God bless you all bye-bye